Shaka. A lack of peace in your life is a sure sign there's a lack of worship in your life. You know, when you worship God in the Spirit and in truth and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth and the truth he's called the Prince of Peace. He's a person. <clears throat> so the lack of evidence of him in your life is just a lack of worship. Yeah, sometimes we just need to step out in faith, <laughs> put on a CD and just, you know, lay there and open your mouth and let the river of life drool at you. <laughs> yeah, worship widens the heart for the river of life to flow through. <laughs> Washing that first love gate, keeping it nice and clean, you gotta keep it nice and watered and freshly oiled in the anointing. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good, it's not, it's not just a good idea, <laughs> it's a, it's a way of life. Uh, hallelujah. Shabbat Shikara. Okay, let's just take a break and practice the manifest presence of the Lord. Not just in word only. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't want the presence of God in word only. Because, you know, the presence of God, it means He's present and He's substance. His Spirit is life. And His life is life more abundantly. It's better than any human life. <laughs> and it's jacked up full of glory. Jesus was full of grace and truth. You know, grace is the power of God to walk in the truth. <laughs> grace is the how it empowers you to overcome the death snares of the world. It's not a gr it's not grace to sin. It's grace to walk above it in the Christ nature. Grace to sin is just sin. <laughs> That's called the fallen nature. That's not grace. That's demonic grace. <laughs> I have grace to sin. No, you don't. You have a demon sitting in your brain lying to you. <laughs> Grace and truth. Grace is the power of God. So when when this when the spirit of truth comes and cuts you, you just like you, you have it. <laughs> you just let that piece fall off you. <laughs> it's like God's just taking his pizza cutter and just cutting off all the crust, all the stuff that slows us down, the crusty edges. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let everything, God, just burn in our lives that is not you. So let everything that is you, the consuming fire, can flow freely and reign, rule and reign in our hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts and reign through your hearts. Hallelujah. Your, your, your first love gate is the king's hallway. You know, he walks through that hallway, you know. Yeah, so he likes a lot of substance. What was I, I going to talk about now? I don't know, whatever. Words are useless unless they're filled with the Spirit of God. Anyway, they're just a little house. <laughs> Words are just a house for the Spirit to fill. Hallelujah. Shabba. Oramashi kareke. You know, you don't have time to engage in religious debates. I don't have time for that, and you don't either. Oh, you need to engage with the living, engage with the Spirit of God, <laughs> engage with the living so that the dead can, you know, see the reflection of, you know, you reflecting God, and they'll want God. Why would they want to have, stay in that swarm of flies just all that those debating lies you know just go it doesn't produce righteousness it doesn't produce the joy of the lord it produces anger and <laughs> all these contentions as a spirit you should just speak the truth and let that sword go and hit wherever it hits you know scatter seed and if they don't receive it you know whatever fire on their lives fire on our lives the fire of the all-consuming fire of god burn up everything that's not of him so that whatever is of him will remain in jesus name he's going to refine the entire earth with fire as the days of noah right 
It's a Holy Spirit fire, consuming fire presence of God. <laughs> you know, it's going to put to death the deeds of the flesh. It's going to put to death all flesh. Like the days of Noah, all the flesh was drowned, man. But he's going to do it with fire now, refining us, putting to death the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit of God. He's going to pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. You know, <laughs> ain't going to be no demon-possessed pigs running into the water, <laughs> drowning off. I mean, the pigs, at least they had enough lick of sense to go to the wet places. Because <laughs> demons love dry places, right? The pigs went into the water and just died. <laughs> It's like, yeah, that's, that's what we need to. We, if we've been all backslidden from God and we, we don't even, we're just li doing our own thing, living for ourselves and pleasing ourselves, and we go, oh, I have grace to sin. No, you don't. <laughs> you got a demon lying in your brain <laughs> saying that I have grace to sin. Grace is the empowerment to break sin off of you. And so you can walk in Christ's nature, as I said five minutes ago. So what you do is you just jump into the river of life and just let the rivers of living water wash all death away. That's what life does. Life washes death away. It's like taking a spiritual bath in the goodness of God. Taking a spiritual bath. Because <laughs> the river of life, the you know, it's a spiritual river. <laughs> Hallelujah. It washes away spiritual death off of you. All those filthy things that come flying at you, hallelujah, just sit in the river of life, sit in the Holy Spirit and just let Him just brood through your being, even now, don't have to wait till the end of the video, behold now is the day of salvation, what is salvation? It's sozo, healing for your body, your soul, and your spirit, it's healing, it's returning to the way we were before the fall. You know, there was never supposed to be death or sickness or torment. <laughs> just perfect love, perfect glory. Just walking in the nature of God, <laughs> in the image of God. The Satan comes along and tempts you. <laughs> well, you tempt it out of Try to say, like, you know, if you do this, if you obey me, you'll be like God. <laughs> Duh, he was already made in the image of God. He was sharing God's attributes of creation by decreeing the natures over the, over the animals. When a name in Hebrew, a name is its nature. No longer will you be called Abram, but you shall be Abraham. You know, <laughs> father of nations. It's his destiny. When Abr like Adam was just decreeing all these natures and destinies over the animals. Pretty cool. God made the animals, and Adam decreed their destiny and stuff. It was just part taken. I don't know. Whatever. Shaka. Whatever. I'm only interested in the peace of God, the love of God, the sauce of God, the spirit of God, the fruits of God, 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 God. I'm just interested in God. I don't have time for debates. And neither do you. Uh, you know, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and follow the living. <laughs> follow the way. Follow Yahweh right into glory. And then the dead might just like see a light. <laughs> <laughs> see the light of Christ shining through your very core of your being outward <laughs> and just lighting up the way because you are the light of the world and a city set on a hill cannot be hidden when you do good righteous spiritual works before them they'll glorify your father which is in heaven because the Lord does the works through you nothing you could do is yielding to the river of life and as he does the works the father does the works you know, the Spirit of God does the works. And it works for eternity, because His words will never pass away. Flesh words will be washed away. But the Spirit of God's words, he those words will never pass away. Because the anointing is on them. And it's just like Elisha's bones, you know. <laughs> there was a dead guy, you know, Elisha died or whatever. He had a double portion of what was on Elijah. He did twice the miracles and stuff like that. When he was in this, there was a battle that was going on or something like that. I can't remember the exact story right now because I do everything on the top of my head. I could plan stuff, but then it gets really boring because I always try to stick to the schedule. And I might do a couple teachings where I have like all my stuff written out in front of me. But anyways. Elijah uh, was in the grave, or Elisha was in the grave, and this guy got tossed, this dead guy got tossed in there. 
and there was so much power in Elisha's bones that the guy resurrected from the dead. That's what the anointing does. It resurrects dead things, you know? <laughs> you want the anointing of God? Hallelujah. God, anoint me <laughs> to break chains off of your people in captivity, you know? Hallelujah. Shabbat. It breaks dead things. The anointing breaks the yoke that ties us to this world. Hallelujah. So you can, we can go higher in the glory, from glory to glory. In, uh, in God's world. <laughs> this is God's world, but that's God's world as well. You know, holy, I don't want to get into theology or whatever. I get I just get confused because I'm not I'm not into that stuff. <laughs> they have other smart people for that. I <laughs> mean I'm more into like, oh I just love the peace of God. I love the presence. Who wants to come over and worship God? <laughs> you know Let's, let's get into the presence of God and go into visions, dreams, revelations, and fall into trances and see the, <laughs> the glory. <laughs> Who wants to hear the audible voice of God? Hallelujah. I love the scriptures too. I listen to them every day. It's funny because <laughs> I had, oh man, straight up honesty. I had the hardest day yesterday. You guys ever go through like a really hard day where nothing goes right? Nothing. I wanted to buy some weights because I, I wanted to do this P90X workout thing. Because I, I don't know, I'm, I'm in really bad shape, but I need to get into shape. So I started lifting weights and I wanted to go extreme because, like, I already I have these rubber bands. And, like, man, you can do like 50, like, you know, curls and stuff. That's not going to do anything. I had to get some dumbbells, man. So I went to Walmart. Well, first of all, I called some people in Craigslist. And uh, my Skype thing was broken. I don't, I don't have a phone because uh, I don't, <laughs> whatever. And uh, so I couldn't make a phone call. Uh, so I used Skype because I have Skype minutes. I can call, and it was broken. And I got locked out of my email. I'm like, man, these dumbbells. I gotta get these dumbbells. It's such a good deal. And then uh, everything was just going wrong. Like, okay, so I'm gonna, I just whatever. I got my, my credit card. I'm gonna drive to Walmart. I drive to Walmart. It's like about a 20 minute drive, half an hour, and uh, I got I got all the weights in my shopping cart, and you know, I'm ready to go, I'm going to go do P90X, because I bought it years ago, but I got sick, I couldn't do it, whatever, far in my life. And then at the checkout counter, uh, I got swiped the credit card, declined. What? Man, nothing's working, my email, I'm locked out of my credit card, I'm locked out of my email, I'm locked out of, Skype is broken to make phone calls. I got mad, my seatbelt was broken, like I, it just keeps popping up so I have an elastic to hold my seatbelt. Everything is broken, and it's just driving me, like just, you ever have a temper tantrum? Like, you know. I think I kicked one of my chairs, man. <laughs> I was angry. I threw a little. I had a hissy fit. I kicked my chair over. And I had a pity party. And uh, later on, my wife came home and then she fixed everything up. You know, she helped me get some weights and I did P90X, but whatever. But uh, I can't remember what I said all of that for. Anyways, I just had a really bad day. But, oh yeah, now I remember. But I sat down after that really long, hard day. I sat down. I just put on my audio Bible for an hour. And as soon as I pressed play, the peace of God is... Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is what I should have been doing all day. <laughs> I should have just been in the audio Bible. I love, I love the scriptures, man. I love the audio Bibles. I love even just reading the Bible. I read it out loud. I read it in my mind. I, I listen to it. I decree it. I talk about it. But all that stuff is to lead us to Him. All like the whole purpose to read the Bible is not to like how to win debates on Facebook or on a blog or something. The whole thing about reading the Bible is to get revelation so you can be more like Him to project Him. Everywhere you go, you. It, I read the Bible because I I'm hungry for God. I mean, I can worship Him, and I do. You know, I was worshiping God just about an hour ago, and I just I worship God so I can be with Him, so I can take on His nature. I read the Bible so I can see what He's like, 
through revelation. Like I can read it with the natural mind, but it's a spiritual book. It's a relational book. So when you read it in, with the mind of Christ or you read it in the Holy Ghost, actually you get revelation that transforms you. Rather than just having head knowledge, which is like, you know, death, you get revelation knowledge, which is life. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. The Spirit of God brings life to those letters so that you can actually, it's like a living, you become a living epistle by those living words coming through and just taking root inside your heart. And then you, you water them by the Spirit of God, water them by the river of life, and then it starts popping fruit through your tree, and uh, you just, you get fruit, and you start walking, because you live in the Spirit, you're planted in the Spirit, but you can also walk in the Spirit. The Bible says that the trees clap their hands in heaven, you know? So, if they can clap their hands and they can move, I don't know, why can't they just walk around? You know? <laughs> We're oaks of righteousness, right? We're like walking trees on the earth, man. <laughs> and you know what a tree does? It cleans the air. Carbon dioxide or whatever all that stuff is. I'm not a scientist, but I know that my mom used to have these plants in the house because it would clean the air. And, uh, so like trees do clean the oxygen. They that's what we do too. We clean the air. <laughs> we become a principality and power of the air when Christ flows through us, just pushing back all the darkness. Pushing back all the choking spirits to release life. <gasps> Ruach breath. Here's a closer look at those that picture. See that picture there? That looks like uh Ruach lungs, hey? Eh? It's just like revelation just flowing through your entire breathing system, you know? <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. So yeah, it's good to get into God. It's good to get into the Bible, but even better than that, it's better to get through, just dive through those words right into the Spirit of God. Dive right through, like, those words right into, like, the living story. <laughs> you know, it's like, these are the testimony this is the testimony of Jesus Christ, what's written, but you can s jump through those testimonies into experience, and you can experience like basically what those people experienced in the Bible, but it's like in a different way, because it's personal with you, my tooth's falling apart, <laughs> whatever, I mean that's one of the, I was one of, that's one of the keys that I use to have encounters with God. I would, I would go on my knees. I'm a brand new believer. I would kneel down. I was like, God, look at this. You walk with Enoch for like all these years and you took him and Enoch was not, you know? Enoch walked with God. Like, I want to walk with God. I want to walk with you. What is it like to walk with God? God is spirit. Like, you know, you know, God's moving. <laughs> so uh, Enoch was moving with you when you were moving. You're walking with him like as a friend. Communing. When I say something, I don't just pray and it's one-sided. I can actually hear God. And uh, I started getting really hungry for more of God. And I would see throughout the scriptures, Moses spake face to face with you, God. So I would like, I want to speak face to face with you. And then one day, like I just, I was literally face to face with Jesus. <laughs> I had, it, that's in another video, hallelujah. Shabbat. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we just love your presence, God. We love your face. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I've seen Jesus' face. I've held the Father's arm. I've seen the Holy Spirit, but I've never seen his face. I'm pretty sure that was Holy Spirit. It was like, uh, I can't see his face. He's like faceless. But he has like the shape of a man. But his face, I couldn't see his face. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that was Holy Spirit. I'm not sure. He led me down a path to these houses, and then he spoke to me a scripture, like you are the light of the world. A light, <laughs> oh hallelujah! A light that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, but gives light to all that are in the house, or something like that. Matthew. I was like, man, yeah, we can't be hidden. We need to let the lamp bright shine brightly through our being. You know, the lamp of the Lord. <laughs> In the Old Testament, that lamp was never to go out. That that lamp, it was going out for uh, what was that guy Samuel? First Samuel, uh, the priest there, Gehaze? No, not Gehaze. Uh I don't remember his name right now. But it was going out. The lamp of the Lord was going out, and Samuel would lay by, you know, in his place, and that Eli, that's it. He would lay in his place, and he was going blind. 
because that lamp is your vision. Your relationship with God is your vision. The, the more the fire of God is burning in your heart, the more clearly you can see. Because His fire lights the way. You can cut through darkness by the light of the Lord. What is it to be a light of the world? Well, it's having your heart set on fire, having your heart set ablaze by spending time with God. Like, I mean, quality time, not just like walking and... You know, I, I do this all the time. Like I do the dishes, I pray in tongues, and I listen to the Bible, I listen to sermons, I listen, I do my Chinese lessons. But there's a time when you stop everything, and it's only Him. You're not doing dishes. I may, like, uh, you know, it's kind of like when you just worship. It's just you and Him. All the world is blocked out. Not a care of the world. And you just get hungry for more of Him. And you, as you feast on the Lamb... You just like, the more you eat, the more you hunger. <laughs> and the more you drink of His presence, the more thirsty you become for more of that living water. And it's all available. Like, oh, the more you drink, the more you thirst, the more you eat, the more you're hungry. If, if you're not eating the lamb, you're probably not hungry for God. You're probably hungry for the things of the world, you know. You're not drinking the river of life, you're probably drinking bitter waters. Probably drinking whatever that world has to offer, the natural things. No condemnation, man. I used to do that. You know, I would uh, go through, get all stressed out, and then I would go, like, get a glass of wine, like, turn into a bottle in condemnation. So, <laughs> been there, done that, get back on the narrow road, and we'll start walking with God again, and realize, wow, that doesn't work. I give that up. <laughs> That's garbage. Can't use natural things for a spiritual attack. <laughs> I used to take Tylenol. I, when this this discernment first hit me, it first landed on me, and I'd start feeling other people's stuff. I was like, "Whoa! I think I got a demon." You know, I was just discerning the atmosphere. I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. Like, I feel demons. I feel angels now. Why are the angels here? They're they're removing all the demons. And then five minutes later, I feel another wave of a horde of devils just coming. And what's going on, God? How do you shut this off? And nobody nobody would disciple me. Nobody would tell me what to do. I'd beg God, take it away, please. I don't I don't want to be the starting of spirits. I just want I just want to be like, you know, a normal Christian. Uh, I had no grid for this. I would go like to like prophets and ask them like, how do you shut this thing off? Like this it's really hurting me. This discernment. <laughs> I didn't I think I asked for it. I did ask for it. I asked for discerning the spirits. So I can discern, you know, God's spirit, the angels, demons, human spirits, so I can know what's of the Lord and what's false. Careful what you ask for, you just might get it. Uh, it helps you walk though. You, you walk deeper with God. Like he has full discernment. He knows everything what's going on. We just have discernment in part. But uh I would take Tylenol <laughs> because it would physically affect me. Like I'm feeling all the stuff, and I didn't know to war, to worship, to just wash it off. I would just like try to fight it naturally. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, I feel all these demons. I'm gonna take a Tylenol and lay down. <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta deal with spiritual things spiritually. The greatest key to everything is just worship. Open your heart wider to God and let the liver of <laughs> liver, let the ever living one flow through you. The river of life wash all the death away. Yeah, and realize like I've come to realize that mm, psh, I'm almost like 95 percent or whatever of stuff that I feel in the atmosphere, it's not even me. It's not coming from me. Probably even more than that now. <laughs> It's actually coming from stuff around me. And you deal with it by just confronting it. You don't cower it away with the anointing. You let the anointing flow through you. You let the glory of God just come, like, just flow through you and push that darkness out. Sometimes it's a wrestle, though. You gotta just, I mean, I wore, I wore out my rebuker. I've rebuked a demon. I've rebuked atmospheres. The easiest thing that works is just worship. Because that's, that's where you connect with God heart to heart, spirit to spirit, where deep cries out to deep. And it's just like the deepest place in the holy, most holy place where He just waters through you. And anything that surrounds you has to flee. Because there's light there. Yeah. God.
what is good? Holy, what's going on here? Wow, my Facebook is going crazy. Oh, All right, take your focus off me and just put it right on God right now. God, I just pray for everyone who's watching this video or listening to the audio. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation come and the knowledge of you. Flood their very being, God, with your spirit. Flood the very core of their heart with your living waters, God. Flush through them. Wash away all the warfare, God. Wash away all the arrows of the enemy. Pour in the oil and the wine. The oil for cleansing. <laughs> the wine for strengthened joy. God, just wash away all the wounds, wash away all the sorrow, wash away all the heaviness, wash away all the all the the attacks of the enemy. Oh, as we just drink your living waters, God. Yeah, Shaka. That we do sit with Christ in heavenly places right now. I'll pour above all those attacks, all those enemy arrows. <laughs> yeah, Shaba. The only safe place in this world is in Christ. Because <laughs> it's in a different world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shaba. Shikare kiroka. Yeah. Kora mama mashi tora baso tarashi. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yeah, just tune your affections to things above. Take your take your thoughts off your problems and put them on the solution. You know, it wasn't the it wasn't the water that held Peter up. It was the word of God. And Jesus said, <laughs> you know, Peter said, "If that's you, Lord, give me word to come on the water." Because Peter knew that the word of God has substance. And Jesus gave him one word. You know, a thousand words couldn't hold Peter above the storms of life. Jesus gave one word. He said, "Come." And then Peter got up and he, he was above the storms of life. He was walking. <laughs> he was walking above the storm. It was the word of God that held him up. It wasn't the water. It was the word. <laughs> it was the washing of the water of the word that held him above the natural water and the natural storms of life. And he says the same thing to us. Come. All you who are weary and heavy laden. <laughs> and I'll give you rest for your souls. Come, you know, <laughs> yeah, Not, you have many teachers, but there's only one teacher. It's the Holy Spirit in all <laughs> and through all who will yield to him. So there's only one teacher. <laughs> Though there's many teachers, there's only one teacher. And you can hear him through people, you can hear him through the Bible, you can hear him through nature, you can hear him through circumstances, you can hear him through numbers. He'll speak through every avenue. But he whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let him hear what the Spirit says, not just what the... But it's like right here and here and everything all connected, body, soul, and spirit just connected, hearing what the Spirit says. Because if you hear what he's saying, then you can obey what he's saying and walk in victory. You know? If you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's how you keep the commandments of God. That's how you hear the commandments of God. By loving him. You know, if you hear me, you will keep my commandments. Not if you hear me. I mean, whatever. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah, so it's very important to hear if you want to be an overcomer. It's very important to obey if you want to remain an overcomer. <laughs> oh, shaka. Yeah, you can sit down with the Lord in His throne even as He also overcame and sat down on His Father's throne. Now that, seat, that resting place is for the overcomers who overcome the world. How do you overcome? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. You, you speak what you know. You say, Holy Spirit. Holy Shaka Hallelujah. 
Yeah, it's best just to focus everything on him and every second of the every second of the day, every moment of the day when you wake up, when you go to bed, when you're dreaming, when you're walking through your day, when you're going through your workplace. It's good to even like if you get distracted, stop, step back and just put everything back on him. Put all your desires there. Put all your affection there. Put all your hunger there. Put all your thirst there. And eat the lamb. Drink his cup. <laughs> Drink the living water. Drink his blood. Eat his flesh. Feast on God. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger after righteousness, for they shall be filled with righteousness. Filled with God. He is our righteousness. He fills us and he also clothes us with the armor of God. You know, he is our mantle. You know, the armor of God is your mantle. <laughs> Jesus, the covenants of God. Hallelujah. You put on the belt buckle of truth. That's you're not you're not meditating on lies. You're meditating on the Rhema. You're meditating on the Logos becoming Rhema. You're meditating on the Word of God Himself, the person Jesus Christ. You're meditating on what he's done in your life and what he's doing in your life and what he's going to do in your life. You meditate on he's the first and the last, all in all. Like he's the beginning and the end of everything. He is all in all. If you see him there, Shaba, Shokaraba Saba. Hallelujah. Yeah, if you want to overcome, just step into the overcomer. Hallelujah. Put on the breastplate of his righteousness. It's his righteousness. It's not yours. You can't do anything. Go ahead, try. I've tried. I've tried to raise stereos from the dead that were broken. I tried to raise bugs from the dead that were dead. <laughs> it didn't work. I've tried. To, I've dragged people out of wheelchairs. They never got healed. Until I started building up my relationship with God. And then I started praying according to the Spirit. As the Spirit led me. And what I learned in, through the scriptures. I became Rhema. That like you know sicknesses were getting healed. Boom. Like it's, it's, You walk with God and you hear His voice. It's not for your own will. But it's His will. <laughs> when you realize what the Father's heart. And He puts His heart through you. It's easy. It's easy. <laughs> The only thing that makes it hard is darkness and believing a lie. But if you already see that is a lie, it's darkness, you can just plow right through it. Just keep walking right through it. Ignore the words of the dead, like debating, factions, religion, all that crap is just worthless. Focus on the living one, the author and perfecter of your faith. How do you get your faith perfected? By hearing him and obeying. Because man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That rhema is your daily bread. The presence of God is your daily bread. <laughs> you know, and your drink is the wine of His Spirit. The river of life. Daily bread. Daily drink. Daily. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you can drink of mu as much of God as you want. Whoa, Shabbat. <laughs> You can eat as much lamb as you want. Have a jubilee right where you are. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. We are free indeed. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a good deed, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus did a good deed by setting us all free. Hallelujah. By obeying his Father. Suffering and dying and raising us all all up because we were all suffering and dying <laughs> but he rose us up he rose again and his re resurrection is our resurrection he is our resurrection and he is our life so hallelujah you don't have to dwell on the things of the past you can set your mind and affections on where you sit right now <laughs> in heavenly places in Christ. You can set your affections there. You can set all your mind, your thoughts, your will, your emotions. Just put it all there. Put all your chips on the table, on God's <laughs> table. <laughs> 
He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. The Lord prepares the table. He's already, he's got everything all set up. All you got to do is just sit down and just commune with him. You know, feast with the king of glory. It's like that, that king, remember David? He wanted to honor Saul's house or whatever, like after Saul died. And he had this, Saul had this one son. He was lame on his feet. You know, that's us. We can't walk. We, but yeah, David still said, like, you're going to sit with me at my table. You're going to eat with me. King David takes this lame man. His father was hunting him down to kill him. To kill this king. The, Saul was trying to kill David. Chasing around, trying to kill him. And then David goes up to his son. He's like, you're going to sit with me at my table. You're going to eat with me. Come on. That is total, that's total grace. That's... He did nothing to deserve that. Just because he was, I don't know, David was releasing grace. And that's us. We're lame on our feet. We can't walk with God. We can't walk in righteousness without Jesus, without God, without the Holy Spirit, without the Father. He's invited us to sit at his table and dine with him. How many will take up that invitation and sit down and rest with the king and eat with him? How many are we too busy just doing our own thing and building up our own lives, building up our own ministry, building up our own, like taking care of the kids, taking care of <laughs> buying groceries. And You know what? On your way to the grocery store, you can have an encounter with God. You can sit at His table and feast with Him. It's not in here. It's not in Jerusalem. It's not on a mountain somewhere in the Himalayas, whatever you call that place. It's in the spirit. You can always sit down and dine with God. You can feast on Him. You can feast on His love. You can, oh, Shabbat. You can. That's where you grow. Yeah, we grow in patience through our tribulation and trials and all the stuff that flies at us. But you go from glory to glory when you just behold Him, just stare at Him, just your heart melts as you as He just unravels of who he is right in front of you just wrecks you oh yeah remembering where you've been with God we'll just, just step right into that anointing that never fades and just go right deeper into reality God the anointing breaks the yoke right you can remember your encounters with God and you'll get faith from that to enter into new encounters with God you don't live in the past nor, <laughs> or, what is that? Like, where are we? <laughs> you know, if God dwells outside of time and we're dwelling in God, where are we? You know? Hallelujah. The heaven of heavens can't contain God. And we're in Him. Don't let any thought processes contain you either. You know? Sky is not even the limit anymore. <laughs> There's no limit. How far can you go in God? How deep can you go? If the heaven of heavens can't contain Him, you know, neither can you. Let Him out. <laughs> Let Him flow free freely wherever He wants to do. Wherever that river wants to flow, let Him flow. Hallelujah. Shabbat. Sometimes I just try to meditate on what's it really like. My mom flew away off this earth a year ago to be with Jesus. And I just sit there, I just sit back and I I just meditate. What is she experiencing right now with no limitations of, of like the body, no distractions. You know, there's no distractions. And she has like this capacity to receive more and more and more and more without ever being distracted and going back to doing natural things like feeding yourself or having a glass of water or you know going to the bathroom like she, she just I so I try to like God what exactly is she experiencing right now let me experience that you know. Let it come on earth as it is in heaven. Just the way you are on earth is the way you should be in heaven. When you're perfectly aligned with the king. <laughs> oh, I like to meditate on things above. 
Because when I meditate on the things on the earth, I get bored. Hallelujah. Just try playing video games for a week straight, or watching Netflix for a week straight. You'll get bored, but if you meditate on heaven for a week straight, it's just like you go from glory to glory, like just amazement to amazement, like just reality to reality, and you realize the more you realize, the more you didn't know, and the more you want to know Him, because He's the source of all that glory. It's just coming right out of Him, and it all came out of Him. Infinite God, hallelujah. Here, I'll just read some stuff to you. My Netflix, my Facebook is going bazooka. Shikaramosha. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's about it for today, except for this. You know, I already said most of this stuff. You know, a thousand words of man couldn't hold Peter above the storms of life. But just word, one word from Jesus held him up. What Jesus said to Peter, he says to us also. What did he say? Come. All who are thirsty, come. If you're hungry, come. If you're weary, come. If you got the joy of the Lord, come. <laughs> Whatever situation you are in, come. Because there's more. There's always more. King of glory. Hallelujah. If peace is missing in your life, so is worship. I can guarantee you, if there's peace, there's no peace in your life, it's because there's no worship in your life. Worship instantly just connects you to the Prince of Peace. How could there not be peace in your life when you're worshiping, when you're pursuing God with everything within you? Your body, your soul, and your spirit. You're worshiping in spirit and in truth. Not just singing songs. Anyone can do that. I'm talking about worship is full surrender of your heart, your will, your emotions, your body, everything. Surrendering to God so you can receive God. You receive the body of Christ. <laughs> you receive His emotions, you know. Hallelujah. You receive His spirit. The only foundation that can hold the entire world in heaven is Christ. All else will slip back into hell. So everything you've built your life upon, it has to be upon Christ. Your experience with Christ. Revelation. You know, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers build in vain. It's the Lord doing it through your life. So, yeah, hallelujah. Every encounter with God peels away the veil that was already torn. Hallelujah. <laughs> It's just those mindsets that have to get ripped off of you. It's like the scales that came off of Paul's eyes, you know? It just gets ripped away. And you just go from glory to glory. He's the one who wrote that, didn't he? You go from glory to glory. Shabba. Remember what God has done and step through that anointing that never fades into uh, reality. That never fades. I don't know, something like that. If you see God's face often, don't be surprised when he pops through yours. <laughs> that was the first time I ever saw Jesus, man. He was in a, I was looking in a mirror, and he told me to go hug a man who needed a hug from the Lord. It was cool. It wasn't me. The Lord did it through me. And I was the, I'm the body of Christ, and he wanted to use his body to hug a man that was really broken. And uh, thank you, Lord, that you used me. He can use anybody, uh, and he will use anybody with their, who will yield their body to him, you know, who will yield their spirit to him, who will yield, yield their soul to him. How do you yield all this stuff up to him? Well, what I've been saying for the whole video, <laughs> set your affections, your mind, that's your soul, your emotions, set it on things above, set it on him. You know, your body too, like just stick your hands up, speak in tongues. If you don't have the gift of tongues, just use English words. But it's be spirit flooding through your heart, speaking to God. You know, and your spirit. You know, your spirit rejoices in God, your Savior. Your soul will magnify Him, and then your spirit will rejoice, because that's where you're seated with Him, in your spirit. Worship widens your heart for the river of life to flow through. Hallelujah. And uh, yeah, I got some more here about Chinese, a lot of glory and talking to giant, talking to Jesus in Chinese. God bless your face. Hope you enjoyed this video. Amen. Put a speck of dust in 
you throw it through a lamp, you can see it so clearly. Like when you have your light spotlight shining down, you see a little piece of dust flying by, you see it so easily because it's coming into the light. Everything that comes into the light is manifest. But you take that piece of dust and you just throw it through like regular air or whatever, every day to day, without any lamps, just a regular day to day. You want, you're not going to see the dust. Probably not. It's the same thing with Holy Spirit, just allowing Him to put His searchlight on you. God, if there's anything in me that is displeasing to you, remove it now. Put your searchlight upon us, God, in Jesus' name. Let us see clearly if there's anything in our lives that is displeasing to you. Just we give it away freely in Jesus' name. We don't want serpent food. Like just that's like having like serpent bait all over you so that the snakes can come and bite you. You don't want that. You know, God made Adam's body from the dust of the earth, you know, and then it became serpent food, because God said you're gonna on your belly you shall crawl, and dust shall be your food all the days of your life, so Let's just get rid of all the dust. You know a good way to get rid of dust is take a bath. <laughs> Jump into the river of life and just just go for it. <clears throat> all that dust, is it's not allowed in there. <laughs> that fallen nature, it just gets washed off you. All the things of the world just get washed off you. And it feels good. <laughs> I love to feel the presence of God surging through my entire body, soul, and spirit and atmosphere where everything is just like electrified. God is glorified. And there's waves of glory just flowing through your very being. Well, how does that happen? Well, maybe just opening up wider, letting God come to you and through you even more. I was talking about a vision that I saw the other day that I didn't get to talk about and I was just reminded of just now again so I think God wants you guys to hear this. This was one of my first revelations of the cross like I didn't know all I knew is like yeah Jesus died on a cross and uh, and uh, we, we get clean like he took our sin and yeah he did it for us. But I went to this meeting, it was a youth retreat or something like that. I was just a brand new believer. I don't know, maybe half a year old in the Lord. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I think this was even my first vision. It was in it oh the such the such spiritual fruit that transformed me. It physically it hurt for three days after this. I don't know if that was a sign and a wonder or just my own stupidity, but I'll tell you what happened. We we're in this church and uh Whoa. <laughs> We're in this church. <laughs> Just give me a sec, man. Give me a sec. <laughs> okay, yeah, we are the church. Yes, we are the church. Hallelujah. The church gathered together in a building one day. Because <laughs> we didn't want uh, the elements of rain and you know, all that stuff to interfere with our spiritual encounters. <laughs> we didn't want to be distracted by the rain, so we had a building. We had a roof overhead, and uh, the worship was okay. I don't know, whatever. Just worship is worship. Some guy at a piano singing vineyard songs. It was cool. And then the preacher comes out. I don't even know who this guy was, but he comes out. He's like, God is over here. God is in the front. Oh, okay. I don't see him though. And whoever wants God, come to the front. <laughs> and uh, nobody moved, man. We're all young people, right? We're all like, and, uh, you know, teenagers. And you know, I was like a young adult. I don't remember how old I was, like 20 something. <laughs> and then he's like, nobody comes to the front. I, I don't know if we did. Nobody believes him. So he's like, didn't you hear me? God is here and he's at the front. Who wants God? Come to the front. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have any theology or anything. I didn't have any understanding at all. Well, I did know one thing that God said that he was inside of that man years ago. That was the first time God ever spoke to me in an uh, audible voice in the spirit. But this guy was saying God was at the front. So I'm like, well, if God's at the front, we should go get God. Let's go get God. I was like, isn't that what we're supposed to do? Like, we come to these meetings to to get God, you know? 
I didn't know that we already had God, but I could get more of God, you know. Uh, so my my friend beside me was like, "Let's go get God, man." <laughs> He's this big Chinese guy. He's like, "No, man." Like, come on, man. You, you hear what he said? He said, God's at the front. Let's go get... I'm pulling on him. He's like, no, 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 no. Fine, whatever. You stay there then. I'm going to get God. And I went to go get God. <laughs> and uh, there was already some people lined up there. They, they ran ahead of me. They were more hungry than me, I guess. But God saw something. <laughs> and he revealed something so beautiful and so amazing that I've never forgotten every detail of it. I got up to the front... And uh, I was like, whoa, boom. Just, he was right. The presence of God just hit me, boom, it went right through me. I totally forgot about everything, everybody and everything in the meeting. And I don't even remember if there was music playing or not. All I just knew was like, boom, I was in this other realm. But I was still aware that I was me, but I was in a different realm. And I was like, I was like, I saw him. It was Jesus, and he was on the cross. And uh, I was like, he was on the cross, he was like this, and I saw the blood dripping from his feet. And it landed right here, boom, turned into a tear and rolled off my cheek. And here come another one, it's like, oh my gosh. I put my hands up, and as soon as the blood hit my, my, uh, my cheek, it rolled off as a tear, in perfect sync. Just over and over again, his blood just kept dripping off. Like as soon as it would hit my cheek in the spirit realm, it would roll off in perfect sync into the natural realm as a tear. I was like, whoa! I just met my heart just whoa, melted, broke. I'm like you did this for me. It was personal. It was not just some public thing. It was like this was Jesus revealing Himself. What He did for me. I could feel the love. I could see the like the price, like there's no words. And uh, I was like, I just wanted to touch him. So I put my hands up, I was like, Aah! I was stretching as hard as I could. And it physically hurt me. So I'm like, because I don't know anything. I don't know this was a vision. <laughs> I thought I was there. Like I thought I was at the, I don't know. I was like, Aah! for three Days, I think I put my arm almost out of its socket. I don't know. It was sore for three days, both of them. Like my shoulders and just this part. I don't know what part. It was just sore for three days. But during the vision, like, I'm just experiencing the cross. What he did for me, the love, like, just pff, the price. Just your heart just breaks. And you just love him more because you feel his love, why he did it coming through and it just perfect synchronicity of like yeah we're spirit and we're in the natural realm <laughs> body soul and spirit everything was just in perfect sync with god and then i like after i come out of that like the vision kind of wrapped up and lifted off and i'm still there I'm like he's gone i'm like oh and i, I <laughs> hurt myself and all of a sudden like from all these tears this big woman like she's a big woman i'm saying she looked like about 400 pounds for a woman. And uh, she went, boom! She she hit me when she landed on me, like on my leg. 400 pound woman. <laughs> it it kind of, whoa, it took me by surprise. And I looked down and she, her cheeks were flapping. Like, psh, psh, ah, ha, ha. And like she had the joy of the Lord all over her. And her face the way it was like the waves of glory were spilling from her cheeks and it was hitting me and I I looked at her and I went from like like the greatest <laughs> experience I've ever had in my life and I got hit with glory waves of joy at my feet this woman man just flapping at my feet and it hit me I was like ah! you know laughter that you cannot like there was tears, stuff coming out of my nose, and laughter. Every emotion was on overdrive. And that's what Jesus paid for. <laughs> for the joy set before him is why he went to the cross. It was the joy set before him. <laughs> and he stepped into it. What did he see? Many sons coming into glory. He was the first. <laughs> you know, he was the first fruits of, the, of many sons who would come into glory. 
he had to enter in through his sufferings, enter into glory. And then he brought many sons into glory, just like that seed that goes into the ground and dies. But if it dies by itself, it, like if it, oh, I can't remember the scripture right now. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit and the fruit reproduces after its kind. So I remember that experience like, man, the cross. I had more than one like experience after that about the cross. Jesus was teaching me about the cross. I didn't have very... I'm still kind of slow, but he's, he teaches me over and over again until I get it. And another time I was like, I was in a meeting like this, like just in the worship. And I have my hands out stretched like this and I'm like singing songs to God. I usually don't sing the songs that are on the overheads because I get bored. <laughs> I, I make up my own words and I just sing my own melody. Sometimes I follow the melody, sometimes I'll sing a harmony. I like to be creative, so... He's just wired me differently, so I, just, I don't kind of fit in the box. I kind of like have to stretch it a little bit wider so we can go a little bit deeper. And <laughs> So I'm, I'm just like this. I'm like singing this song to the Lord, making up my own words. And uh, I went into a vision, and I saw it wasn't, it wasn't me. I saw myself like this, but then it turned into Jesus, and I was on the cross. And then it turned into me, like I was on the cross. And then it turned back into Jesus, and he was on the cross. I'm like, oh, I stopped it. I'm like, oh, God, forgive me. Please forgive me. That was, I don't want to ever touch that. that you did that. That's you on the cross. I'm not supposed to be on the cross. <laughs> I didn't know anything, man. I'm just a baby. I'm growing, right? So I'm like, and then later on, he revealed to me, he's like, yeah, I, I, you're crucified with me. <laughs> Nevertheless, like, he lives through me, you know, when I die. I die to my sin nature, I die to myself, and His life comes flooding through every area that I, that I give to Him. Everywhere, Everything that I yield to God becomes God's, uh, and He can just flow through that, you know? <laughs> when, when Moses yielded down his stick to the Lord, God told him to lay it down, and Moses picked it up again and became the rod of God, and he used that stick to split the sea and to, to deliver an entire nation instead of just leading a couple sheep. Because it became, the rod, it became the rod of God. When you lay down your life, your life becomes the Lord's. You become the temple of the Holy Spirit where He comes and lives and dwells and moves in you and just flows through you. It oozes through you. And it's glorious. So whatever you lay down for the Lord, He, he just makes it better. Because it becomes His. You become His temple. You become His battle axe. You become His flaming arrows that He can shoot and start blazing fires all over the earth and kill demons. You know, you can become a weapon in the hands of the Lord. And uh, you could all whatever fire him, shaka. <laughs> yeah, I hope that blessed you guys. Listen, the testimony of Jesus, the true testimony of Jesus, is the spirit of prophecy. So I can just declare over all of you guys that you can have experiences like this, and you will have experiences like this. When you step out of faith, when someone has the word of the Lord, and you just step in by faith into that thing, what they say, if the spirit bears witness with your spirit, what they're saying is true, then step into that, and you'll have similar experiences. Come on, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The stuff is all backed by scripture. From the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, it's all full of people having visions, dreams, revelations, of God speaking. It's relationship. The Bible is a relational book. If you don't have a relation with, relationship with God, you're not going to really understand it. You'll just understand it naturally, which like the Pharisees did, who didn't know God. And they died, and they don't get eternal life. <laughs> but those who read the Bible with the mind of Christ, it's like you're sharing. Uh, he's just whispering into your heart mysteries, nuggets, stuff like the, that. He's gonna that he's done for you, that he's gonna do for you, and what he's doing for you. Like he just that book is amazing. I love the Word of God. I love the Bible. I love the author of the Bible because he explains it to me, to us, because we're one body, you know. So just read it in the spirit. Sometimes you got to slow down and then you read it, you read like one verse and then you're just like, okay, that just, that just went over my head. So you stop, you read it every word slowly and you just like, just wait for the spirit to make it pop out. And then that's called, a, like I call it a nugget or a revelation when the Spirit reveals what that means. And it's...